Hey everybody, how's it going today? This is Ryan Cardinal from The Ryan Cardinal on YouTube. I can also be found on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, DeviantArt at the same handle. Uh, you can buy my brushes at uh, Gumroad also at the same handle. Uh, that is The Ryan Cardinal, T-H-E-R-Y-A-N-C-A-R-D-I-N-A-L. Uh, this video here is to help anybody who's purchased my Scales brush pack for Clip Studio Paint. I'll be going through the procedures on how I use the the setup and how to maximize the, the brushes at, and what they can do. Uh, bear in mind with me, this is also my first tutorial, so if I'm sounding like a hockey player in an interview doing lots of ums and ahs, I will try my best to edit those out because I know how annoying those can be. So uh, we're, we will start off with the brushes here. So if you've downloaded the brush pack, thank you very much for purchasing them. Uh, they are extremely handy. I wish I would have had these while I was tattooing for my career. It would have saved me an immense amount of time. So in the brush pack, I have top scales and belly scales. Now if anybody's purchased this, you might notice that one of the scale sets, I believe it's scales eight, looks the same as scale seven. So some along those lines. So there's scale seven, and there's scale eight. You'd be like, yeah, that's the same brush. But the thing is with scale seven, I have it designed specifically for doing bodies for koi fish. So you just gotta quickly lay it out, and then obviously you can just draw your head however you want. Again, another little tool that I wish I would have had when I was tattooing because this would have saved me a bunch of time and you can easily see how you can quickly just make koi fish no problem with this brush so uh, if you had any concerns that there was the same brush pack or the, the exact same brush it's just a different setting that I had set up that I threw in there that was all pre-made so you didn't have to muck around with it but back to the real thing at hand is setting up the brushes how I use them so what we're going to do is we're going to be on the scale brush set and then we're going to go down to the subtool detail palette, click on that, and we're going to bring this menu up. And here's all your options, but the one we're interested in is brush shape. Now here we're going to have this little thing called register to preset. We're just going to click on scale one and we're just going to click on this and then that registers it to the preset. Now I'm going to go through all of these and just load them up just so that they're in the preset. This is setting up for later on on how I use them. So I won't bore you with going through each and every single one, but you can see how simple it is to load them up. All right, I'm just going to fast forward through here and load all these up for you and we'll be right back. All right, and we're back here. So I got all of those preloaded into the register here. So I'm gonna close this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the paint bucket tool, go to my regular layer here, it says normal one, and I'm just gonna get a gray I think I'll just leave it at that. And I'm just going to gray this out just so it's a little bit easier to see exactly what I'm doing. Now, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to go back here. And we're going to pick new vector layer. And we're going to draw on the vector layer with the belly scales first. This is how I like doing it. I like seeing how the belly scales lay out. That way I can see the roll of the snake and where it's like folding in on itself. I'm going to shrink this down to the size that's manageable. Yeah, right about there. And I'm just going to draw out just like a generic snake shape. Nothing too crazy. All right, so now that we have the shape there, what we're going to do is we're going to come back onto this layer. We're going to left click the mouse to bring up this menu, and we're going to duplicate it. Once it's duplicated, we're going to come back down to here and we're actually going to pick 
the operation tool, click on that, make sure it's on object, and in the layer copy, we're just going to select the path. Once that path has been selected, we're going to come down to the editing vector options. Oh, by the way, that was my cat if you heard him. All right. Now in the editing vector area, we're going to go down to brush shape. While we're in brush shape, it'll take a while to load up. I don't know why, it's just the way to, that the program is. It'll do this sometimes. But eventually, you click on it again. The menu should pop up right around here. And in that menu are all the scales that we just loaded in previously. So I'm just going to go down. I'm going to find a different scale set that I want to use. Let's just go with uh, scale 7. We'll, we'll stick with scale 7. And bam, there we go. Now what it does, because we were drawing on a vector layer, uh, and we have a path, it'll follow the exact same path as the belly scales. So this comes in super handy uh, when we go to edit some stuff. So what I'm going to do now is see we have some of the belly scales kind of overlapping and sticking out in a couple spots. It's not really a big deal. Uh, again, you can use this how you want to use it. You can use it as a template or use it as is. If you're using it as is, obviously you want it a little bit more defined. So it's going to come in, change my opacity so I can see it a little bit better here. And so I can either bump up the, the scales or I can bump up uh, the belly scales. So since I'm already on the scale menu here, I'm just going to go back down to my editing vector layer. And where it says brush size, I'm just going to bump this up a little bit. And as we can see, without having to muck around with it, just by a couple button clicks, we can adjust those top scales so they fit a lot better over top of those belly scales. I think that should be good. Yeah, that should be fine. All right. Now, once we have these, we got our two layers here. Uh, what I like doing is just selecting both of them, dragging them down, and then making copies of them. Now that way, if I want to go in and adjust anything or put a different scale set on, easy to do because we are going to convert the previous two into raster. Now to do that, we come back onto the layers that we're going to work on, left click to bring up this menu again, and that's where we have our duplicate layer, but now we're going to go down to rasterize. And as we see, the vector layer symbol is gone, and that layer is now rasterized. Repeat that with the belly scales, and bam, there we go. So. Now what we want to do is on the top scale layer is we want to go in and erase out all the sections to reveal the belly scales underneath. Now you can do that however you want. You can do it with selections, with the eraser tool, however you need to. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go through that and erase all this stuff out here. I won't make you sit through that process. So I'm just going to fast forward through this. You'll be able to see it happening. And yeah, I'll be right back once it's all done. All right, and we're back. So... Uh, in case you saw the little speed up there, the way that I was doing it is I went in and I actually selected all the stuff. Uh, the way that I did that is I came in to uh, where your marquees are, that's your rectangle, ellipse, lasso, all that. And I actually used the selection pen tool to quickly go through everything. And that's how I make the selections. And there's also the erase selection tool where you can come in and just kind of uh, erase your stuff out. Cool thing with those is, is they act just like brushes, which means you have the stabilization down here. 
in your tool property menu so you can make really nice precise uh, masks. Let's get rid of all that. So yeah, essentially that's uh, how I like to lay my stuff out. There's a couple little areas, obviously, where it's not absolutely perfect, uh, but that's no big deal. Let me just click on this here. Uh, like this right here, you can just simply draw that in. There's a couple little spots where you can uh, redefine it, but realistically, uh, laying out this entire snake with all these scales, drawing it by hand, obviously going to take a way lot longer. I think in total this might have taken... Um, maybe like 10-15 minutes max kind of thing so yeah that's how I like to lay out the snake and stuff like that and easy enough too if you want to like add legs to it obviously then you're going to have a uh, some type of Asian style dragon and you just draw the head on how you want and then there you go that's how I like to use these brushes uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section or get a hold of me through one of my other social media outlets. And again, thank you if you have purchased these brushes. Uh, it means a lot. I'm actually transitioning from being a full-time tattoo artist for the past 20 years. I'm now retired from that, going into comic books, illustration, and storyboards. So selling these brushes is actually one of the ways that I'm making money on the side to try and support that. So... I will be making more brush packs coming up in the near future. This particular brush pack was designed mainly with tattoo artists in mind, but like I said, I also have a personal project that I'm working on that involves a character uh, that is a snake. So there's also a additional reason why I made these brush packs for myself. And yeah, like I said, any questions, feel free to comment. Uh, any feedback on the tutorial, please let me know. Uh, like I said, this is my first tutorial, so understandably, if it's not the most crisp, clean, or concise, I, I get it. But feedback on that would be extremely helpful. And if you want to buy more brushes, please go check out my Gumroad site. I have the link in my channel. And yeah, that's it. All right, have yourself a good day.